guys, and welcome to a new episode of Anatomy of a Fight, the show where we analyze matches and point out the good, the bad, and the ugly. And what an incredible week this has been. We have been showcasing decks, um, past meta decks that also work currently. Uh, we've had the uh, Control Rage Dagoth and the Mid Grove Tilvani. Those are some powerful decks. You can use them on laddering. Um, good luck with them. Uh, maybe they will work for you, maybe they won't. Who knows? Depends on your luck on card drawing. It is a card game after all. Um, so what are we doing today? On our agenda we are going to announce uh, this week's winner for the two-pack bundle code and uh, post on a new question for the, uh, the upcoming week and for the new two-pack bundle giveaway. I'm uh, truly sorry for yesterday. Uh, this episode should have been uh, aired on Saturday, but uh, we've had an earthquake here in uh, Bucharest. Uh, a pretty nasty one. A 6.0. Uh, I live on the top floor. Uh, when this uh, when this happened, um, the whiplash effect uh, started uh, to trigger and stuff went flying. Uh, not heavy stuff but you know like oh my god it's a poltergeist <laughs> and I got cut off on uh, on power uh, water and gas basically all the utilities were shut down automatically by the city uh, to prevent any catastrophes luckily there were none but it's always good to have uh, such systems in place so without further ado let us announce uh, this week's winner and it is ba -ba 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 -bom. insert drums sound here brent kinley brent kinley with the comment i'll be using piercing twilight as one or a two of in mid battle mage and sorcerer it will be brilliant against so many annoying decks congratulations brent kinley please uh please join me in congratulating him uh, Brent Kinley, please reach out to me either via Twitter, uh, like uh, Twitter, Reddit, Facebook messages, uh, or place your in-game name in the comments below so I can contact you and give you the code for the two-pack bundle. Um, and what should we have next week? So mm, the next week's giveaway, which is another two-pack bundle code, I think. Let's go with the following. So which one of the cards of the Frost Spark upcoming collection uh, do you think is uh, the most overpowered or, I don't know, the most uh, efficient, uh, the most, uh, I don't know, you can you can find attributes uh, that work for you. What is the best card in your opinion? I have two at the moment. I have uh, Piercing Twilight. And... Uh, also Torval Extortionist, so I'm somewhere in between these two. Um, Piercing Twilight, you know, everybody knows it has been the first card showcased. Now Torval Extortionist, it's a 5 cost, 7-5 uh, uh, card, it's agility, an agility card and uh, its effect is slay, um, gain the summoning uh, cost as magicka back into your pool this turn so um, if you happen to slay Ancano with it you will gain eight magicka right that's pretty neat now imagine the possibilities with rage with God knows what uh, uh, DT blade also showcased it uh, he was the uh, lucky uh, streamer to showcase it. So uh, please find below um, the video for it on his channel. Take a look, uh, see how it uh, how it behaves. Um, you also find his input on the card, and also below there's another link um, from our buddy uh, Holloway uh, posting uh, stuff on his um, Elder Scrolls Legends blog, and so far he's been adding all the uh, showcased cards to a um, blog post so everything is there you can take a look at all the cards he will be adding more 
as uh, as soon as they are being showcased. I believe there's one missing. It's the one just um, has just been shown uh, yesterday, I think. Uh, the Hound. Um, so yeah, um, feel free to comment below uh, and uh, subscribe to, in order to participate to the next week's giveaway. Subscribe and leave a comment by answering the question: What is uh, the best card in the collection so far? Um, feel free also to post any comments regarding uh, any cards that will be re revealed until the uh, Frostpark collection um, kickoff. I'm quite cur curious how we will be able to buy it with um, uh, the, the premium uh, the premium collection because currently there's still an issue on uh, mobile devices with uh, with uh, the payment method not being available. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this will get fixed by uh, the guys at Sparky Pants soon. I don't think I will be um, buying the premium uh, premium version, but uh, maybe some of you guys are premium uh, uh, premium seekers, so to speak. Uh, also, don't forget you can uh, record your matches um, if you've got I don't know unexpected win conditions, combos, explosions, Michael Bay. Record the matches. Uh, upload them to Dropbox, create a share link and send them to me by, um, I don't know, Reddit, or Twitter, direct messages or f even Facebook. Uh, send those share links to me and I will uh, grab the videos and put them into Anatomy of a Fight Show and make you guys famous. Uh, so what are we going to see today? We are going to be looking at um, two matches. It's It was a best... Uh, two out of three uh, against Rocket Boy, and uh, I think it's the matches are pretty good themselves. Rocket Boy is an outstanding player. He's just been added as a member of our elite team in the Blood Warriors Guild. So congratulations to him for being a member, and uh, hopefully we'll be we will be seeing all of us soon in any upcoming tournaments. So um. Please enjoy the match, uh, the matches. Uh, see you later. Don't forget about the giveaway and uh, cheers. So hopping on to our first match against Rocket Boy. Rocket Boy uh, played uh, a uh, Dagoth. I think I believe it was a mid-range Dagoth. Uh, he's so good at it, and um, I I expected like to lose eighty percent, but um, I got lucky. So here I am playing uh, my Lalu Conscription um, deck, and I had uh, I had a good starting hand. Rocket Boy forced the field lane with that uh, with that Wardcrafter, and that Fighters Guild recruit came uh, just at the right time to block uh, to block my Bruma Profiteer. Now, the only thing that I could uh, do is um, I have no way to remove either of those. So I will have to sacrifice my Bruma Profiteer. Um, but before I do that, I have to summon something to get that one uh, one health back. And the only thing in my hand currently is the uh, Sanctuary Pet. I also have a Cast Into Time. I am uh, keeping that for uh, a potential Hand of Dagoth. I also have Ravenous Hunger uh, ready in my hand whenever I get Rage. This goes on the board, Rage comes out and um, everybody's starting to feel funny. <laughs> <coughs> As you know, the, um, the Lalo Conscription deck uses uh, Ebenhard Oracles, uh, Rage and Ravenous Hunger plus Brynjolf. Uh, if you can um, can make good use of that, you can go past 100 HP 
in retaliation. That is a counterattack. If you find your opponent's lane full, drop the Ravenous Hunger, drop the Rage, and you'll be instantly healing for loads of health. Now, the problem with, uh, with this board right now is that we are forced to use Cast Into Time on the um, Frost Atronach. I was reluctant at first because I really wanted to cast into time um, the Conjurer, the Breton Conjurer. So this mid-range deck uses um, uses Atronach spawning uh, similar to the uh, mid-range giant battle mage. I believe this deck was actually built upon that. So here it is, the first Hand of Dagoth. And this was quite punishing. As you've seen, I was forced to use Cast Into Time. And at the moment my opponent saw Cast Into Time, Hand of Dagoth came right out of the blue. Unfortunately, this was a top deck on my side. Um, an arrow for the, um, for the Hand of Dagoth. And then suddenly, here it is, another Cast Into Time. Bye-bye, Hand of Dagoth. They all went away. So this was my luck and my luck alone. And this second top deck, Crushing Blow, killing off that uh, uh, Corner Club Gambler. This basically reduced my opponent's ability to play anything. Rocket Boy is sitting on two cards. Um, and yeah, there's uh, this journey, <laughs> this count journey. So Rocket Boy right now doesn't have many options. I'm 100% sure um, the cards played by Rocket Boy uh, were the best available option. Uh, and what a good option, what a good combination, because a Vigilant Ancestor combined with Awakened Dreamer uh, basically just triggers Awakened Dreamer's uh, ability to uh, boost itself. Uh, and this was, a again, another top deck. I was beginning to... Um, to hate my life. <laughs> um, what happened was I drew Dushnik. And I could basically remove the following turn with Dushnik everything. Uh, however, Rocket Boy uh, decided to play Wardcrafter, which is again another strong play, which uh, helped him again gain control of the shadow lane. As you see, you can clearly uh, distinguish four cards versus my two. Here comes um, Dushnik and gets rid of the uh, Vigilant Ancestor plus the Awakened Dreamer taken care of by, uh, taken care of by the uh, Stormcloak Battalion. Don't really care about uh, the Stormcloak Battalion being a one HP because this is a control deck. My um, my objective here is to remove everything that I can and keep my opponent at bay until I gain the proper resources to finish up the match. Decided to throw away the Stormcloak Battalion. Figured it'll come in handy with uh, the... Um, with the uh, Journey to Southern Guard when I will be playing it. Now, I ended my turn because I really wanted the board fully available for the conscription next turn. So here is my opponent getting on with uh, uh, Telvos Magista into the field lane. Which is excellent because I can trade in my uh, fight, uh, Thieves Guild recruit, break that ward, uh, stop him, and stop him from uh, from uh, gaining wards on his hero. And conscription, as always, gets us quite the uh, cards. 
We've got Ravenous Hunger spawned perfectly with the Telvos Magister in lane. There comes the Lesser Ward. Getting rid of that... Uh, of that guard. Opponent is trying uh, to go face. Not spending time on uh, clearing stuff on the board. This was one of the mistakes because I, as you can see, I also have a Nasi in hand. And what happens now is a Nasi will steal both guards and charge from the Cliff Racer. It would have been cool to steal uh, Telvos Magister's ward as well, but well, you can uh, only have uh, stuff as much as uh, you'd like, never what you'd expect. <laughs> so, we're clearing up the board, we are taking care of uh, taking care of uh, all the fuel lane. Rocket Boy currently is sitting with, without any card in his hand. And um, I am quite confident there's nothing that can hinder me from going face. I've got superior stuff in my hand. I've got uh, another Ravenous Hunger. I also have a Rage. Oh look, a Fighter's Guild Recruit. Well, I will uh, take that. Get my Stormcloak Vanguard, uh, sorry, Stormcloak Battalion. Also trading the Dushnik because uh, I really want to uh, keep my uh, Boomer Profiteer on the board and get that HP always. A Firebolt, a good place Firebolt on, uh, on a Nasi. I don't think um, Anasi would have been the Firebolt option, but um, as you've seen, Rocket Boy also had a Lightning Bolt in hand and took care of that um, Ravenous Hunger. So here I am going face. Opponent is down to 4 HP. And I'm just basically filling up the board with stuff. There's no way that uh, my opponent can win. I made sure of that. And this is how uh, Control Elalu works. A last moment effort by a Rocket Boy with, uh, with Tascam. However, it's too late. I'm at 25 HP, opponent is down to 4, and um, yeah, I just uh, I just took the opportunity and ended the match. So it was a good game, an excellent game. If I hadn't been drawing that uh, cast into time, getting rid of the hand, the hand of Dagoth, um, things might have uh, been looking a lot different. On turn 12, probably would have lost. <laughs> Depends. Depends if uh, on rune breaks I would have uh, gained some um, some prophecies. I I'm running javelins in that one. So here we are in our second uh, match from our best to, uh, best uh, out of three. Rocket Boy is playing a monk. And it is a highly versatile monk. You don't want you do not want to mess with this monk. This monk is extremely, extremely powerful. Has um I, I believe it's somewhat similar to uh, our previous uh, Anatomy of a Fight uh, showcase, uh where we um analyzed the match uh versus uh the Sir Show Eight. And the Sir Show Eight also played a monk similar to this. Now, what I am playing is the good old budget control mage. You know, the one with uh, all actions. <laughs> all actions and um, trump cards being uh, a sealer of secrets. 
getting plus one plus one for each uh, action in our discount pile and also a plot twist we are running Sotosil replace uh, replace undying da dragon with Sotosil because Sotosil can win you so many matches if it does not get silenced or um, is a javelin or I don't know something uh, something bad so the Sil can just uh, overpopulate the board with eight eight breakthrough creatures, and that's just uh, that's just game over shut down. I'm trying right now to place uh, to put some pressure on my opponent. I'm aware that I'm giving him cards uh, as soon as uh, I will break those runes, but. Um, I have enough actions in my hand to just um, take care of everything that I want. And Rocket Boy is summoning everything at his disposal to uh, to push for for damage. It's an aggro monk. Remember, you do not want to uh, spend your uh, turn trading into stuff you want to spend your turn attacking face hugging and um, getting that match uh, ended by uh, I don't know turn seven eight nine somewhere along there because uh, if when you're playing an opponent which is for sure not a uh, an aggro deck as soon as that magicka starts growing and growing and growing on turn 9 turn 10 stuff can be really really dangerous we've got um, uh, Don's wrath you've got um, chained actions such as reverberating strike and uh, um, and firestorm you can basically clear everything as soon as they uh, they hit uh, they hit the board. So currently, I should have attacked, but I really wanted a card. Rocket Boy is down to twenty HP. Ending his turn. Um, this was um, quite interesting to see. Why? Well, because as I said before, he's an excellent player. He saw right through this deck. I don't know. I believe turn uh, turn four or five. So uh, his strategy here is to not spam the board, empty empty his hand. Why? Because if you are dead on cards, you are dead anyway. So he uh, he's playing safe, trying to see what what actions I still have in my uh, in my hand. And here goes an, an Ebonheart Oracle on Rocket Boy's uh, Shadow Lane. Luckily for me, I had a cast into time, so I quickly dispatched. Um, even had Oracle and any copies that my opponent might have had. Opponent is down to 8 HP. And I've been pushing damage for quite some time. Just, uh, just, just scraping the surface. Javelin getting rid of that buffed up creature execute is uh, great to have especially since uh, against aggro decks so I will firebolt a Nasi why uh, here's an interesting fun fact well I'm not sure if my opponent uh, saw right through this, but getting a nasty down to three HP, if it 
if it is uh, unboosted and its HP uh, regained, Ice Storm is coming. So there, there it was. A Monk Strike getting back on what precious HP for Rocket Boy. Rocket Boy went on to being 15 HP again. And uh, as I've said, keeping Anasi alive is one of your priorities right now. So that's why Cleric of Klein basically just healed her up for uh, two. Now sitting at 5-4. And here comes my first Stealer of Secrets with uh, 19 attack. Rocket Boy knew what I was playing, I believe, uh, straight away and kept some Javelin in his hand to get rid of any potential dangers. And as soon as I laid a uh, uh, Stealer of Secrets, well, that's a worthy uh, target. So what I'm doing right now is just uh, destroying any, any, um, any possibility for my opponent to uh, regain HP because another monk strike on Anasi would have uh, would have healed him for uh, I think nine so that would have been not so good the second cast into time came right right when needed and there is Sothasil So Ice Storm hitting the board, clearing it up one more time. And um, here comes Sotha Sil as always. At this moment, I was expecting a Javelin or Cast Into Time to get rid of Sotha Sil. Unfortunately, only a Fighters Guild recruit comes along. And the match just ends right here. Because that 16 damage going uncontested was a good match. Thank you guys for watching. Cheers.